Yarnabees. Good morning, Yarnabees. So we're on our trip. We're on our way to Uculet Woke. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's early. <laughs> Sandy's a little bleary eyed this morning. Um, yeah. One thing we just found out actually yesterday is there's a number of road closures on our route. So this highway, because it's right along the coastline of the island, there's always rock slides, avalanches, the road is always deteriorating like 24 seven. So it's an endless amount of, of uh, road improvements and highway stuff. So this road is closed. We had to get up early and leave because we have to get through a certain point before 11 o'clock this morning or else the road is closed for four hours while they're blasting so um, we're earlier than we probably want it to be but we don't want to be stuck in traffic for four hours I'm so tired I can't even figure out where to look up my camera <laughs> yeah so one thing we notice um, on our island when you start to go towards the west coast which is we are are now uh, the trees get progressively smaller and smaller so on our side of the island they're much larger and bushier and as you get out this way they look like sort of stunted half trees so it's, <laughs> as we get closer and closer to where we're going you clue it you can see that the trees are getting progressively smaller as we go so that's how we know we're going the right way but there's a lot of trees so that's yeah good. we're not running out anytime soon no so yeah we got up at well, George got up before 6. Um, I was up a few times during the night because I had to pee the cat, pee me, and, you know, pee the dog and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't get a very good sleep last night. Um, Tia got a great sleep. She spent, went to bed at like 8 o'clock at night and she slept right through and I yeah. went to say goodnight or goodbye to her this morning and I could barely wake her up so she, she was really a likes tired to sleep girl. that girl I tell you well she doesn't really get to that much so when she can't when she comes home she she takes advantage of it so but um, yeah so anyways we're on our way looking forward to three days of, of uh, no answering the phone and no work and just to be in a diff different part of the world as you'll see when we show you some video um, especially when we get out to the, the west coast beach it's literally oh, one of the seven wonders of the world there's nothing else like it yeah Long and Beach to know that there's nothing in between where you're standing basically in Japan is the next the next land from where you are it's pretty spectacular so normally when we go fishing um, we're pretty lucky we get to see whales and everything else and hopefully we will this trip and we'll be able to film them and stuff for you as we're going yeah. we haven't quite figured out how sandy's going to be fishing and filming all at the same time but because uh, <laughs> the way it works is um when you're on the charter you kind of hit them in, in patches and all of a sudden you catch like you know five or six fish in like a minute and a half and it's just like boom 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 I can and I can barely keep it's up. It's quite often that Sandy and I will both be reeling in at the same time, so yeah. it's not always possible for one of us to film and one of us to reel, but yeah. uh, we'll see what, we'll do the best we can. It's a little, that's when we're fishing for salmon, so the way it normally works with our guide is we, we leave very, very early in the morning when it's still dark, because we fish about 25 miles offshore, so we're a long way long way from land out there that's where the reef is where most of the fish are and um, we tend to do the salmon fishing first yeah. and get that out of the way and then uh, then we go for the halibut and when yeah. we do the halibut it's a little bit when we're salmon fishing the boat is trolling so that we're basically going with the waves you don't really notice so much that uh, you're rolling around a bit but when you stop to catch the halibut you basically sit on try to sit on one spot and that's when the boat does this and when Sandy usually likes to put her head over the side of the boat and, yeah. and say hello hello <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah we'll see but we've been be very lucky Sandy the last two times we've come the weather's been pretty calm out here as it because on the west coast quite often it, it really 
you get really big waves and you roll around quite a bit. And Sandy, for the most part, hasn't really had to deal with a lot of that. So yeah. I keep it's warning her. Charm. I gave her the talk when we first came here. That it's now like fishing on the lake with Dad. It's the open ocean, and it, you roll around. And I've had trips out here before I met Sandy, where literally you feel like you're inside a washing machine going around, and you've got the crap beat out of you. By the time you get off the boat, you feel like you've had 15 rounds with Mike Dyson, yeah. and you can't barely get out of bed the next day. But Sandy seems to be the sunshine because whenever she comes, we get this beautiful weather. So, yeah. so we'll see what happens. It'll be nice to go to a place too that on the west coast it never gets the 30 degree heat thing like we've been experiencing. Oh, yeah. We've I'm had a really hot summer this year. We've Paige, just been look, dying. I'm wearing your sweater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we actually put a coat on this morning, yeah. which is a little unusual. Yeah. So one of the things they do get here. Uh, sometimes is um, it, you, you get out of Port Alberni it's like 40 degrees there it's very hot there and then you get out to the coast and you'll actually have fog roll in and it's yeah. like 5 or 6 degrees and it's damp and you feel like you're in the middle of London or something so yeah. that can happen quite a bit out here as well so you never really know what to expect for weather here Yeah, but we will try and video as much as we can and uh yeah, yay. I'll probably have fish guts all over my freaking yeah. phone or something. <laughs> yeah. The last time I got beat up by a, a halibut, so that was fun. Not. <laughs> so. Yeah, I pulled a, a big, my biggest fish I've ever caught last year. We got, or last time we went was a 55 pound halibut. And it was kind of a long, skinny one. It was almost as tall as me when uh, we hold it up. And they're tremendously powerful, and we had to harpoon it in order to get him and uh, he didn't like that very much and then we had to gaff him over onto the boat and he landed right in Sandy's feet and he was thrashing and slapping around and it's very dangerous they're basically solid muscle it's not unknown for people to get their legs broken and stuff if they get whacked by one of these fish so you have to be be very careful this is definitely big boy fishing out here yeah so but Sandy, Sandy seems to be able to handle it. So uh, We'll see. Okay, guys. We will talk to you a little bit later. Yeah, we'll show you when we get there, I guess. Yeah. Chipmunks yelling at us because we're the elusive chipmunk. <laughs> we're stuck in the road closure. Can you guys hear him? He's just bitching us out. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah, we're stuck. Stuck in the closure. George is not happy. We did everything we could to avoid this, but I guess every hour on the hour they let it go. So we should be hopefully moving soon. 
Although this is what happens is people get out and start walking and then when they open it up, everybody's in front of you and there's nobody in the car. So I guess I'll be changing lanes to get around him if I have to. <laughs> in the meantime, we're stuck in a place where it's too steep on one side and too, and, um, too uh, much of a drop <laughs> on the other side to sneak a pee anywhere. So we're kind of stuck here. <laughs> hoping to get going pretty soon yeah. I had wanted to buy that other coffee at the gas station I'm kind of glad I didn't otherwise I still have to go <laughs> so Hi, <laughs> hey here we are in Tofino we're in Tofino and it's the land of surfers and whale watching and more surfers. <laughs> and skin the sucker tourists. So this is where the place to go when you want to buy a $10 coffee or $12 ice cream cone. Yeah. That's when you know you're in Tofino. It's really expensive yeah, here. It's absolutely packed with people. We spent almost an hour trying to get anywhere to park here. Yeah. So crazy here. Our tourism is really suffering here. <laughs> <laughs> but everywhere you look, it's all surf shops. It's insane. So let's go check it out. Walking along, and I pulled a George. I no, didn't. <laughs> she fell into a sandy trap. All through Tofino, there's clever little traps they put out for Sandy. <laughs> actually looked like a dog's drinking bowl, but Sandy steps in them instead. I went to step up on the curb, and I didn't realize there was a dog bowl there, and I went splush. <laughs> my foot soaking wet. I'm sliding out of my flip flops. Everybody was laughing Luckily, at me. only about 150 people saw her. Oh my god, it was embarrassing. <laughs> I wasn't watching what I was doing at all. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's our little hotel. It's uh, barbecues over there. And you come in and it's a nice little area. And there's a kitchenette. It's awesome. And yep. typical bathroom. And oh. <laughs> okay, we've got a big bed and a little bed. Sandy gets the little bed. I guess I'm sleeping alone. Sandy <laughs> gets the little bed, I get the big bed. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm sleeping by myself. It's like, it's like I Love Lucy, twin beds. <laughs> Lucy! Good morning, Yarnabees. Good morning, Yarnabees. It's, uh... Almost five o'clock in the morning. We had to get up at 4.30. We're getting ready to head out and go fishing. Sandy's got her magic ear patch on so she doesn't barf all over the boat. 
Um, we've been told it's going to be a little windy today, <laughs> so Sandy's going to get a taste of what West Coast fishing is really all about. Mm -hmm. um, oh man. <laughs> so anyway, white. yeah, we actually went to bed about uh, seven, eight o'clock last night, which is, and we were tired and we actually did go to sleep. So hopefully we're well rested and ready to go. It's, this is a lot of fun, but it's incredibly exhausting. By the time we get off the boat, we'll be ready to probably sleep for about 14 hours, but um, we're ready to go out and get catch the big one. Excuse me. Yeah, and this thing is obviously working because I'm feeling really woozy. Um, so hopefully I don't fall off the boat. <laughs> I said that to Rosalie from Yarn It Out yesterday, and she says, don't say that, don't worry me. <laughs> I was like, well, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> no, she'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, here's hoping. All right. So We're gearing up and ready to go. Keep yeah. you updated. Yep. See you later. Bye. Well, we're on our way down to the boat. This is luck. Well, here we are. Out in the ocean. Whoa. How you feel? <laughs> Gearing up. Here I am in my Yeah. I'm I'm even bigger than I used to be. <laughs> I haven't done anything. Right? Keep going, George. Yeah. Very good, George. Real, real. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Look at all the energy. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was a hard one. And then the where the white Okay. Is this, that was a fish. Where we oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was sad, eh? Just barely got him in the tail. <laughs> <laughs> survived the fishing trip. Sandy's been sleeping for the last five hours. <laughs> it was brutal. She, I told her before we first ever went fishing on the west coast that it gets, it's rough out there and you get knocked around and she's kind of spoiled. The last two times we went it was actually really calm, calm and not bad at all. But this time she got a taste of real west coast fishing. So, yeah. you know, we did really good. On the salmon, we caught them really fast, but the disappointing thing is um, it was too rough for us to get out to where we catch the halibut Sorry, guys. because that's 25 miles offshore, and um, we were getting nothing but radio reports that it was just really not very nice out there. So Sandy wasn't enjoying where we were. She would have really not enjoyed going out there. It's a long way to get out there, and when you're traveling out, is when the boat's going really fast and bouncing over the waves and you get bashed around pretty good. Got bashed around enough yeah. on the way out. And oh then, my God. Uh, but that would have been another 30 minutes yeah. of that, right? I, so I, I was at my wit's end by the time we stopped the boat to fish. So I was like at our wit's end. So it was nice to get away. We caught some beautiful salmon today. Um, we're going home. We uh, took it to the processor. We have 62 pounds of fish fillets that they're going to be processing for us tomorrow. So when we pick it up, it'll be all nicely cut into uh, two pound packs, all nice flash frozen and vacuum sealed and, and ready we, to put in the freezer. So we got four. So the biggest one we caught today was the one that I caught. And the funniest part is um, it never even bit the hook. Yeah. He, he got snagged. The hook snagged him by the tail. So basically I had him by the tail and he was swimming away and fighting and fighting. And that was about a 30 minute long fish fight before we finally got him in because we'd get him close and he'd take off and, and whatever. He was a 20, 24, 25 pound fish. That's the biggest one we caught. And then the second biggest one was right at 20 pounds. And then the other two were between 15 and 20 pounds. Uh, we also caught a couple of really nice coho, which are beautiful fish to I eat. Died. Sandy caught those. And we got a sockeye, which Sockeye are normally go up the Alberni Inlet. So if you come to Vancouver Island, Port Alberni has a huge fishery um, in the Alberni Inlet because that's where the sockeye go. And you can go out on smaller boats and it's very calm. It's almost like fishing on a river. There's not much wind or waves or whatever. So, And sockeye are generally 
commercially they're worth the most because they're they're very oily and have a high oil content. So the uh, the Japanese and Chinese uh, market really like them. So they get the highest price for the commercial fish. So a lot of people like to get them. But honestly, you know, salmon is salmon. I I'm not a salmon snob. I enjoy eating even pink salmon as much as any other salmon. It's all in how you cook it and and how you make it. So. We've got enough fish to last us for a little while. We're disappointed a bit that we didn't get the halibut because that's I what I. Sandy doesn't like the halibut, but I really do. Well, it's not just um, that I hate the halibut fishing because that's uh, what makes me so. Well, sick. yeah, when you catch when you're trolling for salmon, you're kind of going with the waves, and you don't really feel the conditions quite as much. Although today we did. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to drive the boat a fair bit today because our guide was struggling quite a bit to continue to get the. The lines rigged up and get out, so I drive the boat quite a bit, and it's really hard to um, steer it in a straight line when you've got waves going, and they literally come. These waves come from multiple directions. It's not just waves coming one way because we were fishing up against um, what they call the wall, which is an island where the waves will hit this this sort of rock bluff wall and kind of come backwards. So we we're kind of getting waves from both sides. It was, it was and um, it was like rolling. very, very hard to try to keep the boat in a straight line or to have a whole lot of control. You were having a hard time standing up. Well, and even standing up to steer is, is hard. And and honestly, it was hard for me even to see. Like the windows in the front of his boat um, were not great to see out of. And quite mm -hmm. honestly, I wasn't tall enough to see way up over the <laughs> sounder. So I could kind of peek, peek, peek a little bit there. But... But actually, I think I did a pretty good job of kind of keeping us straight, like he was reasonably happy. And then, although there wasn't a lot of boats out today, there were three or four boats around us, and we're all trying to kind of fish in exactly sort of the same little area. So you're yeah, kind, kind of, of going in a kind circle. of dodging dodging boats that are kind of coming at you, and you don't know what you're supposed to go one way, you're supposed to go the other way, and sometimes you're not watching because you're at the back of the boat. And um, yeah. Anyway, but when you do halibut fishing, it's very different because what happens there, and the halibut ground is about 25 miles offshore, so it's almost an hour run to get out there. So it's a long way to go when you're bashing over huge waves, and it's way out in the open, mm -hmm. and the waves are really big on, on um, what they call big bank. That's where most of the guys go. So you have waves that are coming across the ocean, then they hit a shallower spot where the bank is, which makes the waves even higher which is kind of how this whole surfing wave thing works um so yeah that would have been would have been a little rough today and the other problem is you have to anchor on a spot so you throw the anchor down so you're really at the mercy you're not even going with the wave though the boat really does this a lot when you're halibut fishing sandy feels quite seasick when we do the halibut fishing so i even had um the little thing behind my ear to keep me from getting seasick and, and what did you do today? I, I was feeling I felt good, good, so I took it off, but then I got almost got seasick. Yeah, it was like almost instantaneous. I couldn't believe it. Like within a half an hour, I started getting nauseous really bad. And I almost hurled once, but I kept it together. <laughs> no, she actually, she did really well. And when we got into the fuel dock, um, the guy was meant, several boats as we were heading out were, Coming back in, running for their lives. We were one of about four boats that actually made it out to the spot that we were at. And that was one of the closer in spots to shore to fish. And it wasn't comfortable, but it was fishable. But a lot of a lot of weekenders and people that aren't used to, you know, a lot of people think you're fishermen because they, they've, they've fished on the lake or they fished in Georgia Strait and stuff. But when you come out to the West Coast, it's a whole nother... Yeah. A whole nother baby. So, and then we also had the fog today. So the last two times we've yeah. come, Sandy being the good weather goddess, we've had nice <laughs> sunshine and it's been really nice. But usually you get a lot of fog, which we got a bit today. So really another nice thing that makes you feel seasick is when you're kind of fogged in and you can't really see um, land or anything. And you can't yeah. even see much of a horizon. You kind of feel like you're in a closet and you're doing this and... That tends to really bug a lot of people and make them feel even more nauseous. But but that last like last hour, um, I was trying to focus on this island to keep me from getting sick, and that made it worse. Well, I actually had to look out into the ocean. Most important like, thing um, is is yeah. 
take deep breaths, get lots of oxygen. You just kind of look, you look out at the horizon. If you look down at the waves or you look down at your feet or whatever, you tend to feel the motion sickness thing quite a bit more. So that, that part, I've right? worked on, I worked on a prom boat for 10 years. I've been on the water quite a bit. So I don't, I don't usually get seasick and I, I didn't get seasick at all today. I took a gravel, yeah. more or less precautionary, but I don't really think I needed it. So, yeah. so Sandy had a bit of a taste today and I said to her, I said, this is, what we went through today is is pretty typical yeah. of what you get out there. So, yeah, so I might not do it next year. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, we'll see how she feels tomorrow uh, because she got yeah. banged around pretty good today. Yeah. So the, she's feeling the ride it in out her, there was pretty brutal. Her back and her neck. Well, it's only unfortunately when you're going out there, you're going pretty fast because you want to get out to the fishing grounds and you kind of pound over the waves and. Yeah. There's three or four times where the boat literally got like air and was completely out of the water yeah. and then comes bashing down onto the water. And it's a, yeah. if you're not used to it, you know, the saving grace is we're with probably the most experienced guy out there on the coast. He does this every day and he's a master of driving that boat. So I never, I never ever feel like my life is in jeopardy when I'm out there with Oli because he knows what he's doing. Well, I told he's him, a, I says, he says, Okay, well, this, you know, we're getting out there, so it should calm down a bit and all that. It didn't calm down. <laughs> and I was, I literally was holding on for my life. And it was like a massive roller coaster out there. And it was it like going high up into the wave and down and but high for, up and down. And it's just like, oh. But for him, it it's awful. just like another day at the office, right? Like this, he's from here. He was born here. He was raised here. And, uh, you know, if it was truly, you know, dangerous, dangerous, he wouldn't go out. And actually, yeah. I've been out in far worse weather than what we've had today with him. So yeah, I never was... feel, I never, he's, he's an interesting guy. He's an old crotchety bastard, really. He yells and oh. screams and, and, and yells at you and you got to kind of just take it with a grain of salt and yell back at him and tell him to shut up or whatever. And it's kind of the way it goes. And Sandy's had a bit of a adjustment learning how to deal with him because he's not he's not very politically correct and he doesn't worry too much about but he kind of softened a bit today and he brought out his positive life coach for sandy and said you're doing really awesome and you know, way to go i'm so proud of I you felt and, so patronized. and all of that but uh, you know <laughs> yeah. he but I mean, kind of sort of gets it when he goes yeah. a little too far but uh, yeah anyway so Good news, bad news. I mean, it's always fun to get away when we, we don't have a lot of time where we can get away for two or three days, just us, without a dog and a cat in the bed last night, which was kind of nice. <laughs> and, and the bed um, was too hard for you. Oh, we slept on a bed oh. that you could break bricks on, I think. It was concrete hard. But it was actually kind of good Sandy <laughs> liked it, but oh, man. And then, um, you know, and it, for me, it's always just... I've. I've gone probably 10 times. I've never come home without any halibut before. This is the first time ever. So it's a little He's disappointing. He's all disappointed. Because I, I like to catch them. I like to eat them. <sighs> so, you know. But the salmon fishing is a lot of fun. I mean, they, they fight hard. Um, that one that I tail snagged today, that was probably the salmon, the salmon fish of my life. And then when we actually got him in the boat, we realized that there really wasn't much of that hook in him i'm actually very shocked that he didn't bust out of that because he wasn't um hooked really deep in his tail i, I don't know how we, we managed to get him yeah. because he fought us for probably a good 30 minutes he'd get close to the boat and he'd take off and he'd come back and he'd take off and he was fighting 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 and it's hard to net him when, he, when he's tail hooked because he's kind of coming in backwards and you want to get the the net in the front of him to get him in and we had a bit of farting around to get him but we did finally get him so that was pretty satisfying and we'll enjoy eating him yes <laughs> <laughs> so anyways guys we just wanted to give you an update of what was going on um we're leaving tomorrow morning early yeah. early to try and get around that construction yeah this road construction so the other oh. thing is um it's very very dangerous to come to vancouver island to fish so don't don't move here you know you can visit but don't we're full we're not taking any more people here um and the reason we have it so hard to catch these fish is so people won't come here uh -huh. but but they still try to come but today i think normally the area that we fished here probably would have been 30 or 40 boats fishing there and there was like four boats 
That tells you how rocky so. it was out there. <laughs> Apparently, the, there was a lot of boats that came in because the people that they were chartering was uh, they were all getting seasick really bad. So. It's hard to hard to be a fish charter captain when everybody's over the rail barfing. Yeah, and and one of Oli's boats actually had four little kids aboard, so there was no. Yeah. No going out there today. I'm not sure what he did with those guys today, but uh, yeah. anyway. So I guess I didn't do too bad if I no. was a survivor. No. Sandy, <laughs> Sandy actually did really well. She not only didn't get sick, but she, she found if she was able to sit down, so she yeah. wasn't in danger of going over the side, um, and was able to reel the fish in. She actually did quite well, and she got the yeah. knack of of letting it letting it tire itself out and bringing it in and tiring itself yeah, I think out I and did pretty good. Yep, she did really well. Actually yeah. Oli was quite complimentary even when Sandy wasn't around saying that she did really well. Yeah. And stuff. So Yeah, and she looked good yeah. doing it. She's sexy in those <laughs> reindeer pants, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I don't think so. I our, we I looked like, like the Michelin we looked man. like big so yellow astronauts in our I reindeer. Had so many layers on it. it was it's cold out there. Like even though it's summertime, when you're out there, it's it's overcast. There's no sun. Um, quite often, the fog is really damp, and if you don't wear rain gear, like your clothes can get really soaked through in a very short period of time. Yeah. So most of us, like I had a t-shirt, um, a hoodie. Um, uh, Mac jacket on and my reindeer jacket, my rain gear, your reindeer, reindeer. That's your adventure, adventure. Um, your reindeer was but, on. Yeah. <laughs> but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Yeah, right. whatever. Um, as well. So, yeah, you feel like you've got lots of clothes on. So, yeah. But it, all in all, it was good. I'm glad it's over though. Um, I'm still feeling the effects of the gravel stuff. And yeah, she's it's, I'm not. Idle. I'm not feeling quite well. Like my stomach's kind of eh, and um, so we're gonna have sushi so she can get yeah. really sick. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyways, I uh, hope I didn't make you too sick with the rolling video that I had um, of the waves and yeah, everything. It was hard to record a lot today because. Yeah. We're rolling around pretty good and it's hard to hold a camera when you've got one hand hanging on to something because, yeah. you know, it's hard to describe, guys. It's like being in the wash in a washing machine, mm. getting buffeted from every different direction. It's not a matter of, yeah. like I said, the waves were coming from basically three different directions today. They were coming head yeah. on and from both sides, yeah. depending on where we were in this little kind of... We're over by a group of islands and the waves are bouncing off these rocks and then coming back the other way so you're getting reverberation and yeah. it's kind of a unique, but that's where the fish are. The fish kind of hide around the rocks out here. Yeah. Like it, sometimes it looked like we could almost reach out and touch these rocks. We were really, yeah. really close and it made me a little nervous. He's telling me to steer the boat and go over by the rocks and I feel like I'm only, I'm only 20 feet away from us being bashed up on the rocks and he's just like cool as a cucumber like this yeah. is no big deal and I'm just thinking like oh yeah but anyway okay so tomorrow we're on our way home and then I'll edit this whole thing and um, get it up for you guys so oh I should get rid of this double chin I got going on yeah here. right I'm, I'm, I look like I've gained about <laughs> 50 pounds or something it's like uh anyway <laughs> Okay. All right. Talk to you soon, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye.